We're back at the site of the CTV building which stood just here behind me. We speak to two women who survived the collapse of the building in February and they tell us how their lives have changed since then. The room just exploded and all I can, what I remember very clearly is absolute explosion. And then in that 16 seconds everything changed. I also thought that my life was going to end. Um, I went through lots of different journeys throughout the whole time, but there was one particular time I thought, this is over, I want to die in peace, so I just did gratitudes when I was buried underneath. And I thought it would never end. I thought, oh my goodness, this has changed me forever. The moment they, they said, we're going to get you out of here, it was just like, I don't want to die. I just remembered, I don't want to die, I want to live. And I just went really, really just like, because I just knew that it was so close to getting out. Now I look back and, and can't just quite imagine how broken my body was, because at the time, there's something amazing in the human physiology and psychology that protects you from actually experiencing the enormity of such um, such injuries so that people have said to me, oh, the pain must have been absolutely excruciating. And I can honestly say, I don't remember pain. So how then have you managed to move forward and, and get on with your life in the six months since February? I guess in a way that since that's happened I realised that life is really, really valuable and before the earthquake I felt immortal and now I feel that there's no second chances so I've just really embraced things more and I've tried to turn it around into a positive thing, if, you know, like as much as I can, like I have my dark days sometimes. It's, it's, it's been a life-changing experience and I think, I, I mean, I think it's changed the lives of us all in Christchurch. We're kind of, we just live with earthquakes as part of our life now, not that we like it. And I feel more at home with that in an odd sort of a way. So when I came back to Christchurch, I thought, ha, huh, well, this is actually where I fit right now. Scary and all as it is, this is where I fit. Physically, I have my challenges sometimes with my back, but uh, I don't know, I just don't want that to get in the way of my dream. So I'm just going to go for it and just do baby steps and one step at a time and yeah. February 22 holds more significance than most for Rod Lewis. It was his first day at work in the PGC building and it's a day he will never forget. It happened really fast. It was not like the September 4th earthquake where you could feel it coming and it was sort of built up. This one, um, we barely got time to get up out of your seat and run for the door frame. Everything just collapsed and it was just, it was so quick. Um, we didn't get time to you know, get under desks or things like that. I suppose from when the building collapsed to when it was lights out, uh, it would only be in a matter of seconds. It was that quick. When I'd pulled the piece of um, wood out of my face, um, I'd, I'd done that before my leg was free, so my leg was still jammed. And I knew for sure that if I couldn't get that leg out, I don't think it would have lasted. It was just too sore and just too, it was absolutely, as I said, a 10 out of 10 for pain. So um, I was trying to figure out what to do. So what I'd done for a start off, I'd, I'd um, poked my tongue through my cheek and I tried to find a wee splinter of wood so I could try and pierce my tongue and hold it in place. Um, and that didn't work. Um, all I ended up doing was trying to cut the end of my tongue, so I chewed up the tail of my tie and threaded it through my face. Um, but that wasn't really very helpful. It just hurt like hell doing that. Did you think you'd get out of the building? No, I didn't. No, I was, I was a goner. Yes, yeah, so I'd sort of... Um, yeah, I was reasonably at peace actually, so I thought, I was, yeah, I definitely thought I was going to die and, uh, you know, I sort of said some goodbyes to my friends and family and, 
everybody I knew. So um, yeah, it was a it was a quite a surreal time where we were. We might have been trapped in a building, but and injured. But I still think, and I compare it with a lot of the people that I've spoken to, what they went through that day, um, because they weren't injured or because they weren't in a building, doesn't mean to say that they didn't go through anything less emotionally. And so that's sort of what's got you through, would you say, just knowing that there are people that are sort of worse off? Oh yeah, heck yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're very, very lucky, very lucky. Six months on from the earthquake which claimed her brother's life, Amy Cooney is ready to move on. She shares her story of that day and why she's packing her bags for Australia. In the moment the quake struck, he was on the serving side of the bar and I was on the customer side of the bar and I showed a look to him and I yelled, get out. Um, as things were tumbling around, all the bottles and stuff from around the bar were crashing down and we, we ran out through the front door and um, it was only four, sort of four or five steps out the front door that the, the building came down on top of us and we were crushed on the footpath outside. Uh, after sort of coming to I realised what well, I couldn't move and I thought oh why can't I move, what's happened to me, What? where am I, what's happened, sort of pulled all my thoughts together, started yelling out someone to come and I'm here, I'm here, come and get me out, come and get me out. And I still had Jamie's hand underneath the rubble and um, that was kind of encouraging because I could still feel his hand and I was yelling out, my bro, my bro, and I couldn't hear anything from him but I could still feel his hand. And so you, you held his hand as he died, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? I mean... It's really hard because you don't want him to go but in the same sense you've sort of got this feeling, well, you know, don't struggle if you need to, if it's your time to go, bro, then go in peace and just, you know, so it was really hard because you want him to stay and be here, especially I would, would have loved him to be able to be a father to his two little kids. Six months on from February, you've made the decision to leave Christchurch. Can you tell us what prompted that? I just hope to be able to live a life that doesn't continually live in fear of what more can the city throw at us, in a sense, and also to be able to just get your feet back on solid ground and can move forward with a simple, practical, safe life. Six months on from the February earthquake, we talked to a therapist who was in the CTV building at the time. He shares his advice for people dealing with the anniversary. Stay connected to people. Make sure that they take care of themselves. Um, support other people through if they, uh, if they recognise that someone else is in distress. Um, allow whatever they're going through to really understand that it's really normal and not make too much on the issue of it. Um, it's really common for when people are working through distress, they may have felt like they've gotten through some things around the, the, the issues. And it's really common for, for that to re, be revisited. Um, it's really important not to make too much of an issue around that. Uh, it's, it's unlikely that everything will be resolved once you've gone through it. It's really common for things to just raise again. Um, it doesn't mean anything other than this is just what I'm feeling right now and in time that will pass as well. Those that stay in, in, in the place of the trauma, a, a, a proportion of those people will end up having, uh, will struggle more than others and may manifest into post-traumatic stress, you know. But we know that there's also some research that shows that those who exit place of trauma they may not necessarily end up with post-traumatic stress, but they could end up having more depressive kind of symptoms and that low flatness. Um, and so that's okay to go and talk to someone about that, you know, and get some support. Just because they're out of it in one sense, physically, they may not necessarily be completely out of it in terms of where they sit emotionally and, and, and psychologically. And it's okay to be supported around that time.